Hi everyone, welcome to Diamond Art Modell. Today I'm doing a demold of this Let's Resin coaster. These comes, these ones come in a set of six. I've got this one to show you today. I've used lots of glitter. Ready? Let's have a look at it. Wow, sparkly. And you might be able to see the impression there of a smiley face in amongst this glitter, which I will add a nice gold happy face or maybe even a black. That is the mold. Do do do. This is from that's resin, and there are six to the set. Hi everyone, welcome to Diamond Art Waddell. Um, today I'm continuing work on a couple of those pieces I showed you in the last video. One, the creaky camera. So I demolded this one, it's looking pretty darn sparkly and cool. Uh, I made a little shorts video, so check that out in the loop somewhere. Uh, I'll see if I, I don't know if I can link those or not, but anyway. Uh, check that out in the shorts. But I'm now going to, if you can see this one, has some ridges where I have a smiley face. You sort of see these eyes there at his mouth. Uh, and I'm going to now fill that up, at least attempt to, with some gold colored resin, basically. And then maybe I'll re dime it. I'm not sure once that sets, but we'll see how we go. I did get a little bit of bubbling. Where am I? There I am. I did get a little bit of bubbling around uh, this glitter here. And I think mostly, not so much the green, but mostly the purple was because I actually, for some bizarre reason, decided to just tip the flakes into the mould so that left some gaps for where uh, air pockets could get into. So, yeah, I think mixing your resin with the glitter is a better way to go. I seem to get minimal or at least less uh, bubbles doing it that way. So out of the two, I think that's a better way of adding glitter. You get obviously a little bit more flatter effect doing it this way and adding the glitter straight to the mould. Uh, where you get more of a 3D effect too by mixing it through. So, yeah, I just thought I'd just play around with that idea and see what happens. But, yeah, there you go. That is the back. It looks absolutely gorgeous and spacey and super sparkly as well. So that is what's going on with that coaster. Now, I only did the one. This actually comes in a set of six from Let's Resin. So you can have a look at those as well if you like. Uh, you can. I'll probably try and add links if I can. Um, but this one here... I have a set of six different smiley face type emojis. It's an emoji type coaster. Kind of cool. Anyway, uh, moving along. So that's what I'm going to do for that. These ones are also needing filling up. These are the skulls. I need to add some more black and I'm going to do that today as well. So this is going to have just um, fill them to the top with some black glittery resin. They're kind of firm at the moment, so I'm able to pick those up. I've been sitting overnight. The heart is over in the back corner. I'll see if I can not creep too much. All right, so just coming back over here, I have mixed up another, this is 200 mils, one-to-one -one volume resin. It's just clear. I've just added a little bit into this beaker because I'm going to add the gold. And this one's going to be the black and sparkly bit to fill up the rest of those skulls. And whatever's left over, I'll just add to... Oh, no, another skull, miniatures or something. All right, uh, just seeing which way I should go about this. I might put the smaller amounts, less likely to cook fast in there. I think I want to be happy enough to mix all black into this one. Yeah, let's go with that. All right, I'm going to add a couple of drops of this black. Let's find it really, really good. It's a nice solid black appeal look to the resin and i got this one off amazon i'm going to put two drops in i feel that is more than adequate 
amount of that stuff. It's just an alcohol ink type dye. But it makes a beautiful deep dark black. I was using acrylic paints and some and, and, and that was working quite well, but you do have to put a lot of paint to get a nice dark look. I use the Amsterdam acrylics, but so that does have a nice rich dark colour. But it does have a slight greyness to it that I didn't really want in my resin. Um, so I want a more blacker black, and this seems to have that look that I wanted. So that's why I've shifted into using the um, the, the, the this droplet crack acrylic. I'm oh, sorry, this resin mixture for this one. Yeah, so that's why I moved into those colours, and they look really nice. Now I believe there's a couple other ones you can get uh, in colours of these as well. Has on the back there has a couple of other colours you can get by the looks of a blue and a red, a silver, and maybe a bronze or brown by the looks of it. That tiny little picture. Uh, yeah, so you can get a couple of other colours in that brand as well. But I purchased that one on Amazon if you're looking for it. So I get a really nice black. Look at that. Just with two drops you don't need a lot and when you're using things like the paint and that you've got to be a bit careful because you want to get that really black color but you've got you're adding more and more and more of the paint and then of course the percentages of your resin to your additives gets too high then it makes it a bit harder for the resin to set where this is yeah really nice look at that pretty happy with that i think are we happy with that or do we want a little bit more, a little bit more of a stir? You know what, I might even put one more drop in, just because I want, no, come on. That's probably a bit overkill, but we'll see. Yes, no, that's perfect, really dark. Now that's a really really solid black going on there beautiful give it a good stir and of course i'm going to add some of this fine glitter into this one as well this silver hyper color All those buckles. Because I'm adding quite a bit of glitter, that's why I sort of feel that with the, using the paint, I'm adding way too much additives to the resin and, you know, having that concern that it might not set properly because there is so many. Uh, the percentage, I should say, is a bit high of what's in there. Ah, look at that. Magic. Beautiful. Once again, I'm using the Nick Pro 1 to 1 epoxy resin. And that's not a bad resin for this sort of stuff. It does seem to tend to get a lot of finer bubbles. So I'll just be trying mindful of that kind of thing. Try to be... Try to be mindful, I should say. All right, let's go and pour this into the skulls because that's going to be the first job, moving across. So I've got these guys set up on the mat. I've got the heat-proof mat on glass down underneath there. What you can see is the reflection of the light, but that's okay of this one. Where are you? No, you can just move it out of the way for the moment because I don't really want to get anything on you anyway. Pour these in. We're going to just add all this gorgeous black glitter. Probably could have done with some more glitter, honestly. Filling it right up. Just 
which should be pretty good. I want this fairly close to the level of the, you know, the mould I've got. But I don't want to obviously make it bubbly on that because this is what's going to, is going to be the base. And it's just going to wobble around and whatnot if I do that. I've already done that to one of the skulls before and it just wobbles around. It's like the sand it all back and it was a real shame because I put the uh, Aurora Borealis type look. Oh, look, we have to make more resin. Um, Aurora Borealis look on the back of it as well. So I'll be adding a bit more to this one later. Mix a bit more of that up before I'm finished. And that was, yeah, it was a bit of a shame. I had to sand all the pretty colours off the base of it. Just so it sit flat because it was wonky. There you go. So obviously I'm, these skulls take a lot of resin. I do work it out one day, but um, it's sort of hard to keep track when you're just doing layers like this sometimes. I should write it all down, honestly. That's okay. I just make a bit more up, add some more projects to the list. <laughs> but yeah, I will come back and fill that up in a bit more. I thought I'd pop that in straight away. Work it into those gaps a little bit that seem to always be a problem. I'm thinking I need to get a bigger um, container to mix things up because I can't you do a, a large amount in this cup easily. I need to get a bigger one that's got measurements on the side. So then I can just, yeah. And I've got a stirring pot thing coming, so that'll make it a lot easier. All right, so that's those two a little bit more advanced. I said I'll come back and just make a little bit more and then pop that on top and that will finish that one. And that one can sit there as well. And we'll get on to the main project. It's that way that resin's not going to start setting and doing strange things on me. All right, I might move that light because I need to have everything else where it is. All right, so I'm going to just leave it that way. I think it's going to be fairly, um, fairly good angle for you to see what I'm attempting to do today as well as keep everything where I need it. Uh, not too much glare from that light. Okay, so this is the coaster I'm going to add the gold to today. And I'm going to try and fill those two little eyes up. It's sort of hard to find the, with all the glitter. And that smiley face with some gold. So what I've done is I left a little bit of the clear in this pot. And I'm going to therefore add a little bit of this um, alcoholic and some metallic alcohol ink. It's um, the paper mill brand. And I got this one from I got this one from right up store. I have a link for that one. You can fill it link if you'd like to have a look at that store. There we go. So give them a good shake. They've got a little ball in there. I'm going to get all that metallic -y goodness off the bottom. Mm. There we go. So you want to really make sure you shake all this up, otherwise you're not going to get that beautiful metallic stuff that you want. All right, just move to the side for a second. So I'm going to pop a couple of drops of this. I've got, how much have I got in there? I don't even know. We're guessing at about 50 mils of resin in there. It's hard to see these things. So we're going to guess is about 50, maybe 60. No, it won't be that much. I think 50 mils in there. So we'll pop maybe two drops and see how, whoop, that's three. Okay. Oopsie. See how that goes. Love the colour of this stuff. Okay. 
I used this in the heart and I just dropped it through. I sort of give it a bit of a shimmer effect. I'll see how that works out. But the top is, um, it's a lot of gold floating around on the top. And that looks very intriguing to me. So it'll be interesting to find out when I get to demold that in a day or two. Uh, how that heart's come together. Hmm. I was hoping for this to have a much stronger colour to it. Maybe another one. I wonder if I need to add like a base, like a white or something to bring it forward. Oops. That's like about six more drops in there. I need to do that. I just want that really gold, pretty gold, solid gold look, really. Here we are back again. Now I've mixed quite a lot of the gold through now. It's coming together. I actually added a couple of drops of the white sinker to see if it would give it a bit more of an opaque, uh, solid look. I think it dulled the gold a little bit, so that's not a good idea. So that's probably why this doesn't look as uh, bright as I'd like it to, but it's still an interesting mix. I thought maybe another one or two splashes in just to see it, sort of give it that vibrancy back, hopefully. Still got a nice metallic look to it. That I want. So yeah, it's taken quite a bit of paint because I've got such a lot of resin. I think, you know, if you want just that solid gold that you only want a little bit of resin anyway, but I've got at least probably 50 mils in there. And it's a lot more than I probably actually really need. But that's okay. All right, let's bring back the piece that I want to work on. Now for this part, to get that really close um, into those little sections is really fine. It's really actually kind of hard to see uh, exactly where I'm going, especially this mouthpiece. Like the circles are not too bad. Well, they're not circles, but the eyes, I should say, are not too bad. But this mouth section there is it's quite, um, I was going to say delicate, but it's just very direct where I want to go. So I'm going to use just a, a little syringe applicator. Now, I've got a pack of these from my local junk shop just in where you do the baking, the cakes and decorating and stuff like that. That's where I found this. And I had a pack of these, I think it's about 10 or something for $2. So I thought, you know, this might be handy in the craft room when you want to do really fine work. So I'm going to draw up some resin into here and then I'm going to use that to apply in the areas I want. And then maybe I'll use a brush or more likely just a little toothpick to direct um, resin into those little fine corners. So that's how we're going to apply this one. Let's get some resin up into the syringe. Popping the nib in and just pulling up. I'm going to fill it right up. It's 5 mil syringe this one. So it should hold enough to do hopefully everything can one hit too, not too badly, not too badly. All right, so this will also help me not dribble, hopefully, on the areas I don't want gold resin. So I can bring it right to where I want it. Actually, I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to just press down a little bit just to release it. Definitely didn't need to mix up all this gold. Only very fine area, really. That was a bit overkill. All right, so I'm just popping a little droplets into that area for now. Set my syringe to the side. And then I'm going to just use the toothpick to help direct that where I want. Get some swirls going, the circle effect. There we go. <laughs> Now, the really interesting part is going to be doing the mouth. So 
Once again, I've still got my gold in my syringe. I've got tons of gold made up. I'm just going to apply that and run that down a little bit. Just adding a little bit of pressure as I go. I might need two hands just to steady myself here for this bit. Ooh, careful. Pull, 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 pull. Okay. And drag that into the top here. my hands in the road. So we get that working over to where I want it to go first. Encouragement. Too bad. There's definitely a little bit of overflow that I'm really not loving um, around his mouth. It looks like he's got big lips. Yeah, I needed a very, very small. I used about literally a mil of resin in that little uh, additive, that little adjustment to my piece. So I'm going to have to find something to do with all that gold real quick. I'm just going to use the edge of a baby wipe just to sort of wipe along the edge there. Just to clean that up. So take that. I'm thinking in hindsight, maybe not the gold, but maybe a black would have been better if i just done the black sparkly like I did the back of the actual piece would actually probably look really good too. More unified, but I thought I'd give this gold effect a try, see how we look. Not bad. Probably not as prominent as some other colours, but you can still give the, the outline of the smiley face a lot better. Suck up a little bit of that. A bit of shape. Once again, I'm going to use the toothpick just to run that there, just to get a nice smooth line. So this will probably be a little, hopefully not too much raised up area, which will probably mean I need to dome this coaster just to get it all even again. So I probably will put a clear dome over the top of this later on, and then it'll be all done. Work it all back. There you go. Clean the centre. There he is with his little gold face. Not too badly done. Not brilliant, but you know, we don't need brilliant. Just need different. I'll give it that much. 
So there we go, you can um, add a little bit of details like that. I found the syringe a great idea, so I didn't feel like I was dribbling out everywhere. Like all the little bits and pieces. I've still got all this in here and all that in there to go and do something with. So I'm going to go make some mini gold skulls, I think, at the moment. Although I'm kind of tempted to just stick it in the other big, the other big skull. But I'm going to keep that going with its Black Knight effect. Um, I'll let this one uh, cure for a little while there and put the mat on so it warms up. That. And uh, I'll put the mat on so this can cure up. And then what I might do is just put a little clear dome over it and she'll be all done. So that's today's little adventure with resin. Check that out. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Um, I'll go and make something with this now before it cooks up. And uh, ooh, maybe I'll make some beads. I can do that. That little bead moulds. They could be kind of cool. There's some gold ones of those. That might not work. All right then. Uh, that's pretty much where I'm up to. Make some beads with the leftovers. Perfect. And I'll be able to make some jewellery out of that later on. Nice and simple way of doing these kind of small moulds using a syringe. So I hope that little idea is um, helpful for you guys. Using some other little tool to direct your resin. Easy peasy. Way to fill small moulds as well. There we go. I can make some little gold beads like that. Okay, guys, I hope you had a great day. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Till next time, guys, and have many fun adventures doing your crafts. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Have a fun day crafting, doing whatever you're doing today. And I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. So oh, this one is um, the heart, as I was saying, this is absolutely huge mould from Let's Resin. Yeah, holding 27.7 fluid ounces. Wow. Let's try and demold this. Get my fingers in there. I don't want to overstretch it, but, you know, it's going to need a little bit of encouragement, that's for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's not bad. It's different though.